Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so good to see everybody. So we're in the Christmas season, the Christmas holiday season. And Christmas is a season in which we recognize blessings. So I wanted to back up to like one of the first blessings that we actually experience here. And that is the very blessing of being human. I wanted to talk about how being human itself is a fantastic blessing. So I say that even though many of us experience hardship commonly. Many, many people experience hardship. Sometimes in life we feel overcome by the hardship of our lives and the pain. And it can be hard for us to recognize our blessings. In fact, we are very, all of us, no matter how well off we are in whatever way, no matter how much health or security or friendship or money or whatever we have in our lives, we tend to always think about the next thing and solving the next problem. And I would only be better if I could just do this or if I just had this or if this person would just treat me differently. We're always seeking and grasping. <clears throat> the hardships and the struggles and the pain are real experiences, okay? <laughs> They're not to be taken lightly. I'm human too. And we should acknowledge exactly what we experience. But those hardships, those experiences occur within something greater, something far deeper and more fundamental than whatever ache or pain or hardship we are feeling at any given moment. We exist within a greater context. And it's hard to remember that when we are consumed by the human activities and the human concerns and the human needs every day, all the time. It seems like that's what we're always focused on. And we lose sight of the greater context in which we always exist. That is actually, in fact, the nature of being human. <laughs> we just get wrapped up in these identities and in these issues and in these feelings and in this constraint. It becomes us, we become it. And we lose sight of the much more fundamental context, which never goes away. And that context is, well, actually, it's completely beyond words. It's completely beyond language. We have a few words we can just try to throw around. But that greater context is the context of spirit, love, God's context, the ultimate context in which we exist. In that context, who you and I truly are today and every day, is love and peace and joy. That is who we are. We are powerful, creative beings. We are consciousness itself that has come and freedom and love and joy are part of what we are and we've come to have this kind of experience here on earth. And here we are. So, this place that we're in right now can be very extreme. The constraints that we deal with here are extreme. But, we have actually voluntarily, I know we don't <laughs> remember making this choice, most of us, we have voluntarily taken a step into these extreme constraints. Why? Why on earth would we do that? <laughs> if it's true, if we're really from some higher place and love and peace and joy and freedom are our true nature, why on earth, no pun intended, would we come here and do this and be this person and experience the potential hardship of this world and all the needs that seem to fall upon us every day. Why? Lately, I've, I've been more out, out and upfront about sharing my pre-birth experience. I'm not going to speak about it in depth here, but I do want to shine light on the fact that being human is an absolutely profound opportunity and gift it is the most precious, precious gift to be given the opportunity to come here and be this and experience this, to have this human walk with all of its context and all the constraints and all of the richness, the good and the bad. It is a gift. Why do we come? I can't possibly put ample words on this because it far transcends what words are capable of. We live in a world of form and duality there's no form I can take and just hand it over. Or I can't do that. It's not how it works. But <clears throat> I want to say, I'll say it at least this way. We come for the purpose of the expansion of love and joy through the integration of experience. 
We enter the world of form to be something specific and see how we can better express and expand our true loving and creative nature in and through that context. And the context of being human offers a very specialized and unique opportunity. The experience of being human is incredibly unique. I know that we only remember the human part most of the time, but it is incredibly unique. It's very specialized. It's highly specific, super dense, super in the duality context, super rich, and a cognitive experience that is very unique. The idea of the ability to see the world from a human viewpoint. It's very unique, very, very, um, I don't want to use the word unusual, but it is, it's a highly specialized experience. It's not like a run of the mill thing. It's like getting in a spacesuit and going into outer space. You can do that. It's a pretty unique experience. Yes, it's highly constraining and very strange, but it's, being human is a bit like that. It's entering an extreme experience of an extreme type of limitation. And here we are. So, uh, so, but when we're seen from the other side for doing that, why do we, why do we do that? We're actually seen in a way that is full of love and respect because we are seen as actually doing something extremely valuable by being here. And it's seen plain as day. In fact, there's a near-death experience I love from a woman named Amy Call. In her near-death experience, she said that she could see that from the other side, all of us who had agreed to come and be human were seen as superheroes. <laughs> to come and engage this rich context, to be willing to do that. Now, again, I can't speak to it fully to so why that opportunity is so profound, but I do want to draw attention to two ideas. The first is that there is a profound opportunity for personal expansion possible. For meeting this experience and having the opportunity to make choices within this experience, there is profound personal opportunity for, for experience and for growth, for integration of experience. And that integration of experience, that being who you are in this context, is incredibly additive and expansive. So can, to put it in another way, can you be the loving being that you truly are even here? Can you be kind when you've had a bad day and the person next to you is being grumpy? Or can you be strong when a situation calls for you to stand up for something? when it's easier to stay back in the corner. You know, can, can you actualize the truth of who you are in these very, what seem like mundane and common circumstances? See, the earth draws out, in a way, what we really are when we're met with this level of constraint. From the other side, it's easy to see the truth of peace and joy and the knowing of who we are. It's another thing to come here and be you to be human and have to eat and go to the bathroom and wipe your bottom, you know, and all the things in our, in our world that seems so, you know, crass and simple or, or even annoying. Who is the I that applies that self into this context? When you do that, when you integrate that experience, when the constraints are then released, it can be seen, oh my goodness. It was a precious opportunity. Every single hour, every moment, every day was an incredible, incredible opportunity to be there for others, to help, to grow, and to be your full self here. Because when you can do it here, man, wow, how much greater you forever are for having experienced this and integrated this. Again, it's extremely hard to articulate, but there is an expansion of being which lasts past the physical. The physical is temporary. <clears throat> Your body is not going to run forever. It's like a car, <laughs> you know, it breaks down eventually. <clears throat> Sometimes piece by piece. <laughs> eventually, it's not going to work anymore. And when it doesn't work anymore, you will still be there. And in fact, you will be more you because now you're not stuck in a car. <laughs> I'm not saying we're not actually, we're not actually stuck in the car. The car is experiencing within us, is being experienced within that which already exists. But as a way to put it, when death occurs and the constraints are lifted, who you truly are is known, it can be seen plainly, and you are free, free. And it's like, oh my gosh, I never was those aches and pains. I never even was male or female, I was me. 
and I experienced these things and got to make all these choices. Wow, what an amazing gift. Okay, so then the second broad idea, so the first broad idea is personal expansion through the integration of experience and who we become, how we become more by experiencing being this human in this place. The second broad, <laughs> this is super even harder to talk about, the super broad category is by living with a, within a context of duality, we are providing opportunity for the expansion of what is. Okay, because by being something specific and manifest, by being this and not that, by being the male and not the female, by being old and not the young, by experiencing eating the cereal and not the pizza, whatever, you are adding to the experiential frontier of what actually is. I know that sounds kind of abstract, but it's, it's actually a creative service to be engaged with manifest experience and then see how you can meet it. In fact, other reality systems, this is kind of a broad claim, I'm not going to try to get too much into this, but other reality systems rise up from the earth experience and other experiences here in this type of reality. We are helping to add to what is simply by being here, simply even by needing or wanting, like even the experience of lacking something, oh, I really yearn for that. Even that has a meaning within all that is because now you know what it is to yearn. Now that can be filled. You see, it's by experiencing a depth of contrast that it's actually adding to its opposite. It's, <laughs> I don't want to limit it to that, though, because it's more than that. It can't be spoken of. All I can say is that by being here every day, we are performing a creative service. A service that is not apparent to us necessarily from the very local human-focused vantage point. So I'm going to go from that very broad idea to the most mundane metaphor I can possibly think of. So imagine that you sit on your couch all the time and your couch is nice and comfy and you're at home and you're watching TV and everything's good and peachy. And then one day you say, you know what, I think I'm going to go for a run. And you get up from the couch, from the comfort. Why? Why leave the comfort of the couch? Because there's something in going for a run, there's something in the, the stress of having that experience. And then you come back and when you come back, you're stronger. And now the couch is comfortable in a way that it wasn't even before, because now you understand what it's like to not be on the couch. <laughs> you see, there's a very simple and almost, it's kind of a dumb metaphor, it's just, but it's the simplest thing I can think of for how do we possibly express why we're here? Well, Again, there's, there's a thousand reasons and more, and I can't possibly speak to them. But if you imagine within the greater context of who we are as beings who are immortal, we are immortal, beings who have ultimate freedom, no limitation. What can it be like to come here and no limitation? You're doing it right now. <laughs> You're knowing limitation right now. And that is a, not only a gift, it is a service. Being human is a blessing. There's only so many slots. There's only so many opportunities. The number of spirits vastly outnumbers the number of human characters that we are playing at this moment. The breadth of all that is, is beyond imagining in scope. It is so breathtakingly vast. But you were the one given to the opportunity to be you, to be this human in this place, just you. Out of all the breadth and scope of all of creation, you were given the opportunity to be here today, to make the choices you will make today, to eat your next meal, to love the person next to you, not anybody else, you. What an honor and what a profound gift that hopefully we can remember in this time of Christmas. Now I'm going to say a quick prayer, and we'll just do a very brief meditation. God of love, God of our being, thank you so deeply that you are with us here in this place in this Christmas season. Thank you that you are always with us, no matter the time, no matter the place, that your love and your presence transcends all of the context and all the constraints that we experience every day. Help us, God. Help us to sense your presence. 
to sense the greater truth of who we are, that we might be there for each other, that we might live this life to its fullest, that we might live in joy and without fear. Help us to know, help us to see that we can be that love and that we can feel that love even in this rich and amazing context of earth. Amen.